Hello, everybody, math seven, no, math six students. We're doing our third lessons in our booklet, which is green on fractions one. And you should be on page 16. It tells you on the bottom what the page number is. And on the top, if you look right here, you see that it's lesson three. So that's the last lesson in our packet. Uh, let's see. So in this lesson, we're talking about equivalent fractions right here. And what that means is that they have the same value. They have, uh, like, let's say you have one half of a pie. If you have two fourths of a pie, you still eat the same amount. So equivalent. And we're using our array here. We already finished one of these, but I guess we're gonna do another one. So if, if you start here, this number here is zero and you always go up to one. So from zero to one, if this is a number line, one half would be right in the middle and there it is. If we go to the next line and we go from zero to one, but it's cut in three equal pieces. So if it's cut in three equal pieces, each piece is one third of the way. So then that would be one third and that would be two third. And by the way, this would be three thirds. Three thirds is the same as one. And then we start on this line. And as you can guess, we got how many equal pieces? One, two, three, fourth. So that would be one fourth of the way. This is two fourth of the way, three fourth. And if you um, finish up, that would be four out of four, which is equal to one. And you can finish the rest yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is one, six, two, six, three, six, four out of six. Whoops, don't want four. Four out of six. By the way, use audio. You want to listen to my voice. Otherwise you're getting only half of the lesson. Okay, turn that on. That's a U by the way, audio. And five, six and six, six. And then from zero to one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal parts. So we have one out of eight. This is the distance from here to here. Two out of eight. Remember one is the same number top and bottom. That's called the big one in our lesson. That's it's a significant number and we're gonna use this a lot. Use the array in problem one, which is this one, to name two different pairs of equivalent or same fractions. How do you know each pair is equivalent? So if you go down straight and they line up, those are equivalent. So one half is the same as two fourth is the same as three six four eighth. These are all equivalent. And now we have, this is one pair. We need to name two. So I'm gonna find two more that line up. These line up, these line up, these. So you're looking for the ones that line up. So let me use this one. Three fourth is the same as six eight. Now notice the relationship. This is called a proportional relationship. Three is half of six and four is half of eight, right? Or you can go backwards and say six is twice three 
and eight is twice four. So that's a proportional relationship. And here it's the same. Two is double the one, four, double the two. Three is the third is three times one. Six is three times two. Four is four times one and eight is four times two. So you always have a common multiplier or divisor. It's about multiplying or dividing. But what I really want you to understand is that the ones that line up are equivalent. So these two would not be equivalent, okay? So that's the next question, I believe. How would you... Oh, no, I'm not going to answer those two. I'm just going to leave it as that. Um, how do you know? This is the part. How do you know the numbers or fractions that line up? Vertically. Vertically is like this are equivalent. Let's use our good math language. Oh, see, here I am. I'm trying to use the good math language. I think I made a mistake. Equivalent, where is it? Equivalent. Okay, so that's this page. So this is the array you can use to see which ones are e equal. Next page, so we're on page 16, by the way, make sure you're on the right page. Next is 17. And we're looking at area models. Remember area models are the ones that are two dimensional. So usually I use like a um, rectangle or a circle. Yeah, they have, they're two dimensional, they cover something. Those are called area models, okay? Miss Jetter asked her students to draw diagrams, which are those area models to show that two thirds is the same as three six. We already know it's the same from our fraction strips. However, I also know that four is twice two and six is twice three. So they're proportional. So I know they're equivalent, but let's use an area model anyways. So first I'm going to write two thirds as an area model. And that makes it like I'm going to use a rectangle make it nice and big, and, and I'm cutting it into how many parts. The bottom number tells you how many equal parts. There's three of them. So my job is to get three equal parts. That's always the denominator or the bottom. And I have two out of that. So I'm shading in two, and you can shade any two you want, two out of three. And the other one is, four out of six. Well, if you cut this model in half this way, how many pieces do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So that now gives me a model for my new one. I have to use the same box and it should have the same size and I'm cutting it into six equal parts. Remember, they have to be equal. So try your best, like me, one, two, three, four, five, six, bottom of denominator. I need to shade in four out of those. And you notice again, I have the same model. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes it helps to circle this would be two, two out of three. And if you look at it this way, it's going to be four out of six. Okay, on number two, I'm going to use math. I'm gonna say show that two thirds is equal to four six. So I have to use math now, and we're gonna use the big one. Okay. 
okay, that big one. So let's look, two thirds. Now remember the big one is used with multiplying or dividing. Those are the two operations we use with the big one, not adding or subtracting, only multiplying or dividing. If we want to make a number bigger, we multiply. Oh no, I don't wanna go there. That's what I wanted to do. If we wanna make a number bigger, we multiply. If we wanna make our number smaller, our fraction smaller, we divide. So those are the two you have to decide. Well, I'm gonna leave some space here because this is where my big one is gonna be. And, and I'm gonna think, am I going to multiply or divide? Well, two and four, so I'm going bigger. So when I go bigger, I multiply. And my big one is always a fraction that has the same number on the top and the same number on the bottom. That makes it equal to one. Two times what is four? Two times two is four. Well, and then I have to put the same on the bottom. It has to be same. Three times two is six. And now I know these two are equivalent. Okay. Let's try another one. Show that um, I'm making up a number five over six is equal to 10 over 12. So I'm going bigger. If I go bigger, I need to multiply. From five to 10, I'm going bigger, right? From six to 12, I'm going bigger. And then I'm going to decide what's my big one. The big one is a fraction that's the same number on the top and the same on the bottom. Five times two is 10. And six times two, remember same number, six times two is 12. So this is how I can show it. Okay, let's try another one <clears throat> in this square. I'm not using every single square because I think we're gonna practice a lot. And so I'm gonna say show that, by the way, I like the other color too. Let's use another color. Let's like that, like that color. Show that. Four out of six is, oh, wait. Four out of six is equal to two thirds using the big one. So from four to two, we're going down. It's getting smaller. This fraction is smaller. So now I'm using my division. And I decide, what am I dividing by to get to two thirds? Four divided by what is two? It's two over two again. Remember the two must match. That makes it equal to one. You can divide by one and it will not change the value of your number. You also can multiply any number by one and it will not change the value of your number. Six divided by two is three. And there we have shown. Okay, here's our big one. So this is how we are going to proceed with our exam with our problems. Uh, I'm going to the next page 18. Sometimes my machine messes up. So I have to unplug. Okay, this is a practice page, but we're gonna do it together. You will have a worksheet that you need to work out also to get to show me that you understand and the worksheet you always turn in. So there's a worksheet for lesson three. If you don't have it yet, you will need to get it. Okay, uh, let's see, it's not working. Okay, here we go, should work. 
Yep. Okay. Use area diagrams. There's an area diagram. And the multiplication property of one, which means multiplying by one will not change our value of our number to write equivalent fractions. Include these words in my word bank. I already, we already filled out the word bank. Okay. Use section 1.5, which is in the back for help if needed. 2, 6 is equivalent to 6 over 15. Well, we already know it's true because 6 is 3 times 2 and 15 is 3 times 5. So they form a proportional relationship. However, let's finish. So you notice that um, 2 fifths would be the top part. Because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equal parts and I shaded 2. So this is two fifths. But if you look at it, the whole picture, if you look at the whole picture, how many equal parts do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's my number 15 and I shaded six. One, two, three, four five, six. So this right here is six out of 15 and you have the same model, the same picture. Let's look at the big one. Two times what is six? Three. Five times three is 15. So my big one is three over three. Okay, use your calculator if you're not sure if that's true. Two times three is six, five times three is 15. This is also called expanding a fraction. When I use the word expand the fraction, then that's what I'm talking about. Make it bigger. If I say reduce the fraction, it'll be smaller. It'll be the division. So on this one, I have 12 over 20, 12 out of 20 equal parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 equal parts, 12 are shaded. But I'm going to reduce the fraction. I'm gonna make it smaller. So I'm dividing top and bottom by four because four goes into 12 and four goes into 20. How do I know I have number sense? If you're not sure, use a multiplication table to see the multiples of four and the multiples of, uh, they, they, they have both of these numbers. 12 divided by four is three, 20 divided by four is five. So in other words, 12 out of 20 is equal to three fifths. Now you can see the three fifths when you look at the whole picture and you see those lines right here. They're dividing this model into five equal parts. That's this number. And there's three of them are shaded. So we have three out of five as well. Okay, two out of four is equal to one half. It makes sense because there's a proportional relationship. One is half of two and two is half of four. Yeah, so that's true. So, but we need to draw a picture. I like rectangles. And I first shade two out of four. So I have to cut my rectangle in four equal parts. So I always start in the middle half, then cut that in half and cut that in half. And I have two out of four. But if you look at the whole picture, the whole picture tells you that you also shaded in one half of the whole thing, right? Half of it is shaded. So these are equal. Let's look at the big one. We're going from two fourths, we're dividing because it's getting smaller. What are we dividing by? Two. Never ever have different numbers here. They always have to match, okay? That's why they make it a one. Two out of two is one. 
two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two. So this is how that works out. On number four, I'm only going to use my big one. We already, we already uh, got the idea two times three is six, three times three is nine. So two thirds is equal to six out of nine. Okay. Over here, the whole picture is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times three is 18 equal parts. I just multiplied top times side and shaded R6. And the whole picture has three equal parts. And one of those a shade. Oh, that's the wrong number. That goes on the bottom. The shaded part goes on top. Okay, so six out of 18, we are making our fraction smaller. So I'm gonna divide by the big one. And what are we dividing by? From six to get to one, we divide by six. 18 divided by six is three. I'm gonna st stop here so we can cross this out. Yeah, so that's an area model and using the big one and on the say at the same time. Okay, next we're going to page 19. This was page 18. You're now on page 19. I'm always looking down here. We're crossing out the top. Yay. And we're going to start with number nine. Multiply or divide. So multiplying makes our fraction bigger. Dividing makes our fraction smaller. A form of the big one to complete each same statement. Draw diagrams if needed. So the big one. Ah, so they don't give me that number, but I can tell two times what is six? Do you know it? Two times what is six? Use your calculator if you have to. That's a three. Two times three is six. I have to multiply the top. One times three is three. Okay. This one is a division problem. We're making our fraction smaller. 10 divided by what is two? You can do 10 divided by two and find the what, it's five. 10 divided by five is two. 25 divided by five is five. So these two fractions are equivalent. Okay, let's find the big one here. We only have the clue three from nine divided by what? Nine divided by what is three? If you use your calculator, do nine divided by three equals, and that will give you that number. 15 divided by three is five. Now I notice with my students, division is harder than multiplying. If you need to use a calculator, please do. I don't want you to get hot up right now on um, simple ar arithmetic. But it is always good to know your num number facts. If you are fluent in number facts, like 15 divided by three is five, you're going to excel more in math. So on IXL, there's an, in the lower grades, there are exam, um, there are exercises you can do to get you more fluent. I use the word fluent in arithmetic. This is called arithmetic adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing numbers, okay? Down here, we're looking for this one. I'm inserting the big one, three times what? Three times what is nine? 
do 9 divided by 3, the inverse operation, the opposite. Use your calculator if you have to. It's 3. Top and bottom will be 3. 12. Ah, now who can find this number? It's not 12 times 3. It's actually dividing. It's backwards. It's the inverse operation. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So this number is 4. Let's test it. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. That's correct. So now, here we go. We only have the bottom. 9 times what is 45? Do 45 divided by 9 gives you the number. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 ninth is the same as 10 over 45. Who would have thought, right? Divide it. 56 divided by what is 7? I already know it's 8. You can find it by doing 56 divided, no, you can do it by 56 divided by 7 is 8. 2 times 8 is 16. Six, check it out at the end to make sure you're correct. 16 divided by 8 is 2. 56 divided by 8 is 7. This is called reducing, making it smaller. Okay, next is page. We're almost done, guys. Uh, two more pages, looks like. Three more pages. Okay. Next is we're going to order numbers. So this is 19. Oh, it won't let me. Okay, let's try this. All right, here we are. Page 20. Okay, page 20. Make sure you're over there. Writing fractions in simplest form. Ah, okay. It's a little tricky here. Um, factors. If you go back to your uh, vocabulary page on the very first page, the inside of your cover, you'll see that factors are parts of multiplying. So factors are one. These are factors of 24. One usually doesn't count. I don't even want to deal with one. It doesn't change if you divide or multiply by one. Two is a factor of 24 because 24 is an even number. Always check the number. If it's even, factor is always two. Yeah. Three is a factor because three times eight is 24. Four is a factor because four times six is 24. Six is a factor because six times four is 24. Eight, 12, and 24. So the last two, the first and the last, are usually discarded. Usually. I should say usually. Definitely one does never really count. Okay, but they are a factor. 24 goes into 24. 12 goes into 24 twice. 8 goes into 24 three times. 6 goes into 24 four times. Those are your times tables. Okay? These are not factors of 24. 5, 24, use your calculator, 24 divided by 5, it equals, it will give you a decimal number. So it's not a factor. And I'm looking for my calculator, what the decimal is. 24 divided by 5, use a calculator, it's 4.8. So when you have a decimal number, it doesn't count. Yeah, so 5 is not, 14 is not. Go do 24 divided by 14. It's also going to give you a decimal number. Oh my goodness, it's called an irrational number. It keeps going. I'm going to just make a shortcut and say it's 1.7, about. So you see those whole, those, those are not factors. 25 does not go into 24. 48 does not go into 24. Those are way too big. So factors versus not factors. A factor of a number is 
a divisor of a number. And use your calculator if you have to check. Check all these, they all go into it. You can all divide, 24 divided by two, eight, uh, 12, and so forth. A divisor of that number. I'm gonna shorten number. I'm gonna give you the hashtag. This means number, okay? Write all factors, okay? What number, it's an even number. I always check, it's even. 12 is even, so two is definitely a factor. Yeah, 12 divided by two is six. That makes six a factor. Six goes into 12 twice. I know three goes into 12. 12 divided by three is four. That makes four a factor. I can't think of any others. Oh, and 12 and one, always the 12 and one, yeah. 15, this is not even, but any not time a number ends in zero or five, it's divisible by five. So you can start dividing by five, that makes it three. By the way, one is always a factor, but like I said, it usually it doesn't make much difference when you multiply or divide by one. Three is three times five, so five is a factor. 10 doesn't go in and 15, I think that's it. Six, so we start with one, two, three, and six. Those numbers go into six. 30, start with one, it's even. When it's even, I divide by two. That makes 15 a factor. Uh, three goes into 30, 10 times, that makes 10 a factor. Mm, can't think of any others. If you can think of more, let me know. Two, three, oh, six goes into it, two. That makes five a factor, six times five. And of course, 30. Can't think of any other, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, no, 10, no. Yeah, we got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, got 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 doesn't go in. I think those are it. These are fractions in simplest form. That means they're reduced. They're the smallest numbers possible. Okay, these are not in simplest form. Two over four. Notice how both numbers are even. You can always multi uh, divide top and bottom by two. So that makes it one half. 10 and 15, one ends in zero, one ends in five. Those numbers are divisible by five. So you can divide top and bottom by five with a big one. So that's not simple form. Six over 16 are both even. Even numbers are divisible by two. You can divide top and bottom by two. 20 over six are even numbers. You can divide top and bottom by two, at least, sometimes even more. Same here, four and 400 are both even. You can divide, actually you can divide top and bottom by four. Four goes into four and four goes into 400, 100 times, okay? So these are not in simplest form. We always want our fractions in simplest form. It's easier to understand um, four out of 25 parts, then 20 out of six parts or something. We wanna make it as small as possible. We say that a fraction is in simplest form when both numerator top and denominator bottom have no common factors. Write each fraction in simplest form. Show a big one calculation. Six over eight, they're both even. We're gonna divide. When we reduce fractions, we always make them smaller, so we divide. Six and eight, 
are both divisible by two. So my big one is two. Six divided by two is three. Eight divided by two is four. This is simpler. There's no common factor, okay? They have no number in common. Six over 12, uh, both are even. So again, when they're even, I can divide by two. Six divided by two is three. 12 divided by two is six. But notice we still have even numbers. So I'm gonna continue by dividing by two. Three divided by, oh wait, oh no, two doesn't work. Three is not divisible by two. But I know that three is divisible by three and so is six. So my big one is three over three. Three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. So this is my final answer. Sometimes you have to keep going if you see that you end up with two even numbers again. 12 and 15, what are their common factors? If you look at your multiplication chart, you see that three goes into 12 and three goes into 15. I'm gonna give you a quick way to know if it's divisible by three. If you add the digits one plus two, and the answer is divisible by three, the whole number is divisible by three. One plus five is six. Six is divisible by three. So that's a called checking to see divisibility rules. So they're both divisible by three. So that's four over five. And this is in the lowest form, simplest form. You guys can, well, I'm gonna, hmm. Here you just cancel out the common zeros. That's always simple. I think you can finish this rest. 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, homework. Is she, Anika thinks that six over 24 is equal to three over 12. Is she correct? Is this in simplest form? Explain. So try to see if this is true. I can already see the answer, but you might have to look a little bit. Remember, this is not simplest form because both are divisible by three. Okay. Anyways, this was page 20. And then let's go to 21. Now we're locked talking about common denominators. It's going to get a little tricky. We're looking for multiples of six. Six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 60 are all multiples of six because you can divide six into these numbers. These are not multiples of six. One, two, they're all lower. Do you see? They have to be either the same number or higher. Multiples have to be usually higher than the number. The number itself, and then it goes up. These are not. Seven is not a multiple of six. 14 is not a multiple of six. A multiple of a number is uh, uh, how do I write that? Um, you can divide. let's say 60 divided by six is 10 or multiply. Six times three is 18. So 18 is a multiple of six or you can divide, okay? Write the first six multiples of each number. So we start with two, that's always a multiple. And then we have four, six, eight, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 12. So you're just multiplying. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. 
Two times four is eight, two times five is 10. Those are multiples. So start with a low number and then multiply eight, uh, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. Look at your multiplication chart. Six, 12, those are, if you keep adding six, you can also think of it as adding. Six plus six is 12, plus six is 18, plus six is 24, 30, 36, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 multiples, okay? I'm kind of rushing you through this last page. Um, oh no, we still, we, uh, yeah, almost last page. Two frag, okay. These fractions have a common denominator. So you're looking at the number on the bottom. These fractions do not have a common denominator. See how they're different, the numbers on the bottom? That's a problem. This is good. This is not. We have to fix it when we add or subtract. Two fractions have a common denominator when the bottom number is the same. So now look at these two, they're not the same, right? Rewrite both fractions with a common denominator. So circle the fraction with a greater value. So we can make it to, to bring two up to four would be two over four and three over four. One half is the same as two fourths. Now we have the same denominator and we're circling the bigger fraction, which is three parts out of four. Three and four, they both have a 12 and the multiples would be 12. If you look up here, do we have three and four? No, 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 no. They would have, they should have done that. 12 is a multiple of four and 12 is also a multiple of three. So to get from three to 12, I have to multiply top and bottom by four. So that's eight over 12 and multiply top and bottom by three because four goes into 12 three times. So that would be nine over 12. This is the bigger fraction. Eight and six. Eight has a multiple of 24 and six goes into 24. So we have to make our common denominator 24. seven, <clears throat> so we have to multiply top and bottom by mm, three. And here we multiply by four. This is the bigger fraction. Four and five, common denominator would be 20. Four goes into 20 and five goes into 20. So now we have to fix the top. The top cannot stay one and two. Four times five is 20, so that would be a five. And five times four is 20, so that would be a 12. This is bigger. Three and five, common uh, multiple is 15. So our denominator is 15, but I have to multiply the top also. Three times five is 15, so that's 25. Five times three is 15, so that would be a 21. Eight and 12, common denominator is 24 because eight goes into 24 and 12 goes into 24. Now I have to fix the top. Eight goes into 24 three times, so that's a nine. Three times three is nine. And 12 goes into 24 twice, so that's 10 because five times two is 10. This is the bigger fraction. Now this page is probably to some of you very confusing. Finding the common denominator is not easy and we'll practice 
but um, I wanted to show you that. And last page is 22, which is a breeze. 22 is talking about mixing juices. A grape juice recipe, G, right? Is made with parts of concentrated grape juice. Oh, here it tells you G and parts of water, W. Here are four pictures that show recipes for making grape juice. Which is the most grapey? Show your reasoning using two different strategies. Here we have two out of three, two grape, one part water. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, five out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five out of eight. One, two, three out of total. You always check the total. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three out of four total. So which one is the, has the most juice? So you're looking for the biggest fraction, it looks like. Which has the biggest fraction? I'm gonna leave that up to you to figure out. Um, you can change your fractions to decimals by dividing. Remember, that's always an option. You can go two divided by three uh, equals and see what's the fraction, the biggest fraction. I mean, what's the decimal? The biggest decimal has the most grape juice or you can find the common denominator of all these numbers. Three, six, eight, and four. What's the common denominator? And make it fractions with the same denominator. See if you can figure out what would be the common denominator and then make these fractions into the same. These are the new fractions. Six, th the, the common denominator has to be divisible by all of these numbers. I, I would start with the biggest number and take the multiples of eight and see if three goes into that, six goes into that, eight goes into that four. So it has to be either eight or bigger, the number. Okay, I'll let you figure that out. That would be interesting. And then um, have a good one. You need to also in your notes have this vocabulary quiz done, which is on this page, which is page 26. So if you notice, you have questions here. And if you go to the next page, please don't sit there and twiddle your pencil. Go to the next page and look at these definitions. The definitions will actually have the wording of the question, and then you can see the the answer that you need to put into your vocabulary quiz. So these two pages here, the definitions, you don't read the question, don't read these, read the definitions. Yeah, and then you have the answer right here. So these are the answers to your book. There's not all of these. You don't use all of them, just a few, okay? So these are the assignments. I wish you the best. And you can always pause your recording and take notes slowly, okay?